Hello all, welcome to Codify with Sonal and I'm really sorry for the delay of the video. So here I am with my new practice series of AWS Solution Architect Associate SAAC03. So yeah, these are uh, real type exam questions, not exactly the same. Okay, and uh, this will help you in walkthrough. I have already told in my previous videos as I'm already running a previous practice series also on my channel that please don't treat this as dumps. These are not dumps. These are walkthrough to make you understand what type of questions come in exam. And also one more thing about this is that you get to understand the services together through walkthrough because uh, in the exam you will not be asked, okay, which is the storage service? No. There will be combination of what you can use with storage. You can be, it can be serverless. It can be security it's like all the components are combined okay so let's start with today's question and if you have not checked out the earlier practice series please check it out the link is in the description box below so let's get started uh, first of all i would like to uh, tell you the rules to follow to excel your exam that is make a group of study mates that really worked for me guys because I was uh, struggling with it for last six months and I could not maintain the consistency flow. So being with study mates, it really helped me. And uh, this is how we prepared dividing the services and preparing individually. And then we try to focus on each other's weak points so that when you explain your concept get, is getting far clearer and the person who's listening, they also clear their uh, points. Okay. So first, I would request you to please go ahead and do some course, how to select course and what all courses are there to excel this exam. I've already put up in the video called how can I pass my solution architect associate exam. Okay, so let's start multiple choice questions. Do not forget there is no negative marking. Please mark the answers if you do not know the correct answer. Okay, an AI powered forex trading application consumes thousands of data sets to train its machine learning model. Uh, the application's workload requires a high performance parallel hot storage to process the training data sets concurrently. It also needs cost effective cold storage to archive those data sets that yield low profit. Which of the following Amazon storage services should the developer use? I guess we have done this type of question. So, yeah, it's considering two types uh, of uh, requirement over here. So, what does hot storage mean? Hot storage means uh, some kind of storage that you can access frequently, okay? Every now and then you want the access. But what does warm storage, there is one more term called as warm storage. What does it mean? It means that you want to access it less frequently compared to hot data. Then cold storage refers to the storage that you keep uh, like longer. You are not querying the cold data very frequently. Like to, uh, for example, if you want to have records from last uh, 10 years before. So that is your cold storage because you don't query that data frequently. Around 2 to 5 years, that kind can be a warm storage. And just current year is definitely a hot storage. Now, in terms of pricing, the colder the data, the cheaper it is to store. So, use FSx for luster and Amazon S3 for hot and cold storage respectively. S3 we can use because it is having a glacier which helps you store the cold storage. And FSx for luster is regarding high performance and parallel hot storage is uh, the one. And also, you need parallel hot storage as in the files, right? So, yeah. So, uh, Lustre and uh, S3 would be the correct one. But let's see why others are not correct. Use Elastic File System and S3 for hot and cold storage. Now, we know your S3 is correct as I already told you it's a cold storage. Now, why EFS is not correct for hot storage? EFS, uh, although it supports concurrent access, but it does not have that high performance ability for, uh, you know, what that AI, AI technology needs high performance. So that high performance availability is in FSx for luster. Uh, use FSx for luster and EBS provisioned IOPS SSD volumes for cold and for hot and cold storage respectively. Okay, the hot storage is correct. But now coming to EBS provisioned IOPS SSD, 
why it is incorrect is because provision i of ssd is generally designed for hot storage the data that is frequently accessed used in io intensive workloads and then ebs also has a storage called as cold hdd which you can use but here for archiving cold storage is basically for archiving so for archiving uh, cold hdd is very much expensive compared to glacier that's the reason in cost effectiveness we are looking for s3 as a cold storage use fsx for windows file server and uh, amazon s3 for hot and cold storage respectively okay so now why not uh, windows file server is because it does not have a parallel file system itself so the correct answer is fsx for lustre uh, and s3 for hot and cold storage respectively next question a data analytics company is setting up an innovative uh, checkout grocery grocery store the solution architect developed a real time monitoring application that uses smart sensors to collect the items that the customers are getting from the groceries refrigerators and shelves then automatically deduct it from their accounts the company wants to analyze the systems that are frequently being brought uh, and uh, store the results in s3 for durable storage to determine the purchase behavior of its customers what service must be used to easily capture transform and load streaming data into amazon s3 uh, elastic search service and splunk now first understand the question okay there's a company which analyzes the data okay and uh, they want to set up uh, a checkout free grocery store okay like real time monitoring application what is frequently bought and then um, according to that they can you know check the behavior of their customer they want to analyze what is better to buy ahead and what is not okay so now uh, how can you easily capture it you have to transform it and you have to stream the data into elastic uh, into amazon s3 elastic search service and splunk so what is this definition this is a clear definition of amazon kinesis data firehose okay so yeah i would not like to discuss the other points because these all we have already discussed kinesis is correct but uh, data firehose is more correct redshift is a data warehouse service sqs is not a point here you cannot do all these things with S sqs okay next question a company host a multiplayer game on aws the application uses ec2 instances in a single az and users connect over layer 4 so now what is layer 4 layer 4 is network layer solutions architect has been tasked with making the architecture highly available the highly available means what more than one availability zone they are already telling the instances are in single availability zone if that availability zone is down the whole application is down okay so uh, highly available and also more cost effective cost effective one more keyword i always told you mark your keywords how can the solutions architect meet the meet these requirements select two make sure in the exam you read this that you have to select one or you have to select two okay configure an auto scaling group to add or remove instances in multiple availability zones automatically you can create an auto scaling group uh, of ec2 and uh, so that it can add and remove instances across multi ac this is one of the correct answer next increase the number of instances and use smaller ec2 instance types okay this is incorrect as uh, you can do it but it is not the most cost effective option okay auto scaling should be used to maintain the right number of active instances okay configure an auto scaling group to add or remove instances in the availability zone automatically here it is not at all talking about highly available as again it's a single az okay configure an application load balancer in front of the ec2 instance
Uh oh. Sorry, I wrote the answer here itself. Okay, fine. This is incorrect as uh, application load balancer operates on layer 7 rather than layer 4. Okay. Configure a network load balancer in front of the EC2 instances. Yes, correct. So, A and E are the correct answers. Next, a company has deployed a new website on EC2 instances behind an application load balancer. Route 53 is used for the DNS service. The company has asked a solution architect to create a backup website with support contact details that users will be directed to automatically if the primary website is down. How should the solution architect deploy this solution cost effectively? Okay, so what is happening is uh, there is a website which is being deployed on EC2 and you have an application load balancer in it. Now, if your website is down, you should uh, move to a secondary link. That's what Route 53 is for, right? Routing your uh, application to healthy resources. So, uh, let's see the options. Configure a static website using S3 and create a Route 53 failover routing policy. Yes, this is correct. What happens with the failover routing policy is users will be directed to the main website as long as it is responding to health check successfully. If the main website fails to the health check, then Route 53 will automatically direct the users to the backup website that they are creating and running on S3 bucket. Okay. Now, here it is important to set the TTL on Route 53 records. Okay. Configure a static website using S3 and create a Route 53 weighted routing policy. Now, what is weighted routing policy? Weighted routing policy is used when you want to send a percentage of traffic between multiple endpoints. In this case, all traffic should go to primary uh, until it fails and then it should go to secondary. Okay. Deploy the backup website on EC2 and ALB in another region and use Route 53 for uh, Route 53 health checks for failover routing. Uh, first of all, this is not at all a cost effective option for the backup website. It can be implemented using Route 53 failover routing which uses health checks but it can be a very expensive option. Okay. Next, create the backup uh, website on EC2 and ELB in another region and create an AWS Global Accelerator endpoint. Now, what is Global Accelerator? It is used for performance as it directs traffic to the nearest healthy endpoint. It is not at all useful here in failover scenario. Okay. And also, it's a very, very expensive solution. Okay. So, the correct answer is Configuring a, stat configuring a static website in S3 and uh, creating a Route 53 failover routing policy. So, the last question for today. An organization has a large amount of data on Windows SMB file shares in their on-premises data center. The organization would like to move data into S3 they would like to automate the migration of data over their AWS direct connect link. Which service can assist them? This is a very simple question. Okay. So, an organization has a huge amount of data on Windows file share servers. Okay. In their on-premises data center. They want to move their data to S3. They would like to automate the migration of data over their AWS direct connect link. So, what is uh, used? First, let us see Snowball. Now, Snowball is what? Snowball is a hardware device that is used for migrating data into AWS. The organization plan to use their direct connect uh, link rather than sending it via physical device. So, Snowball will not automate the migration at all. Cloud formation. Cloud formation can be used for automating infrastructure provisioning, not for transferring data. 
database migration service database not data you are read the term it's database migration not data migration next is data sync yes that's the correct one what is data sync it can be used to move large amount of data online between on premises uh, storage and s3 or elastic file system what it does is it eliminates or automatically handles many of these tasks including scripting copy jobs scheduling and monitoring transfers etc okay the source uh, data storage can be server message block file servers okay so the correct answer to this is data sync so now uh, as many of you might have gone through my previous series so i would request you to attempt two questions as homework and uh, let me know the answers in the comment box with a valid that why this is the correct answer and why others are not correct i want to hear both the sides so that you know when you're thinking the correct answer you should also think why others are not correct okay so yeah this is the question you can pause the video this is the first question okay i will not explain this question you have to try it yourself and this is the second question okay comment down your answers i'll be waiting for that and please let me know how do you, how are you liking this series and i'm once again really sorry for the delay i was uh, not well due to which uh, things got delayed so here yeah, we'll try to keep regular ahead and uh, please tell me what other kind of videos would you like me to share on let's codify with sonal in the next video please like share and subscribe my channel do not forget to hit the bell icon to get a notification of the updated video thank you so much guys